Integrating by parts is the integration version of the product rule for differentiation. The basic idea is to transform an integral you can't do into a simple product minus an integral you can do. Note that u and v are in alphabetical order in the integral of u dv and u v. If you remember that, you can recall that the integral on the right is just like the one on the left, except with the u and v reversed. Here's the method in a nutshell. What's the integral of the square root of x times the natural logarithm of x times dx? First, split the integral into a u and a dv so it fits the formula. For this problem, choose the natural logarithm of x as your u. Then, everything that isn't the u is the dv, the square root of x times dx. Next, you differentiate u to get your du and integrate dv to get v. Finally, plug everything into the formula and you're home free. To help keep everything straight, organize integration by parts problems with two boxes like this. Put the u in the upper left corner of one and the natural logarithm of x in the upper left corner of the other one. Now, put the dv and the square root of x times dx in the lower right hand corners. The arrows here remind you to differentiate on the left and to integrate on the right. Think of differentiation, the easier part, like going downhill, and integration, the harder part, like going uphill. Now, complete the box. A good way to remember the integration by parts formula is to start at the upper left square and draw an imaginary number seven, across, then down to the left. Taking a look at the seven, the integration by parts formula tells you to do the top part, the natural logarithm of x times two thirds times x to the three over two power minus the integral of the diagonal, two thirds x to the three over two power times one over x times dx. Try it. You'll see how this helps you learn the formula and organize problems. Ready to finish? Plug everything into the formula. In the last step, you replace negative two-thirds c with c because negative two-thirds times any number is still just any number. Now go over picking your u. Remember that once you choose your u, everything else is automatically the dv. Herbert E. Kasubi came up with the acronym L-I-A-T-E to help you choose your u. To pick your u, go down this list in order. The u is the first type of function on this list that appears in the integrand. If you have a hard time remembering L-I-A-T-E, perhaps it will be easier to remember let's integrate another torturous example. Try one. Integrate the arctangent of x times dx. Here's a hint. Integration by parts sometimes works for integrands, like this one, that have only a single function. First, go down the L-I-A-T-E list and pick the u. There are no logarithmic functions in the arctangent of x times dx, but there is an inverse trigonometric function, the arctangent of x. That's your u. Everything else is your dv, namely plain old dx. Next, do the grid thing. Plug everything into the integration by parts formula or draw the imaginary seven in the box on the right. Now you can finish this problem by integrating x times one over one plus x squared with the substitution method. Set u equals one plus x squared. Remember that the u in u equals one plus x squared has nothing to do with the integration by parts u. Now you have the final answer. Try it again. Sometimes you have to use the integration by parts method more than once because the first run takes you only part way to the answer. Here's an example. Find the integral of x squared times e to the x power times dx. Go down the L-I-A-T-E list and pick the u. x squared times e to the x power times dx contains an algebraic function, x squared, 
and an exponential function, e to the x power. It's an exponential function because there's an x in the exponent. x squared is the first on the LIATE list. So, that's your u. Do the grid thing. Use the integration by parts formula, or the 7. You end up with another integral, x times e to the x power times dx. You can't do this one with any of the simple methods, but you've reduced the power of x by 1, so you've made progress. If you use integration by parts again for the integral of x times e to the x power times dx, the x disappears entirely, and you're done. Integrate by parts again. Take the result and substitute it for the integral of x times e to the x power times dx in the answer, and it produces the whole enchilada.